Hello everyone, my name is Mark. And before I get started, by a show of hands, who here owns a smart device? Smart device, okay. So this may be breaking some rules, but it's okay, some rules are meant to be broken. I'm gonna encourage you to tweet as I speak. So how you can do that is by using the hashtag FabSpeak. For those who don't know Twitter, you may not know that. For those of you who are watching on YouTube or other websites, I want you to tweet as I speak as well. You see, although I'm the one on stage here today talking, I believe that change and progress and education can only stem from conversation. In order to have a conversation, you need to have dialogue. So I'm a writer, and as a writer, I love words. More importantly, I love the definition of words. It's sustainable, it's tangible, it's understandable. So before I start, I thought I would define the second part of my title for today's talk. Embracing your potential. A verb phrase. Embracing your potential is the act of greeting who you wish to become with open arms. It is believing that you can achieve, that you will succeed, and that you will walk in your greatness because your potential is limitless. See, the problem with embracing your potential is that that's not possible until you learn to embrace yourself. And that, well, that's difficult. And unfortunately, there is no manual in life that can fully teach us how to learn to love and embrace ourselves. Out of the countless self-help and inspirational books out there, you might be wondering, why would he choose to talk about embracing yourself? Well, you see, for me personally, I didn't realize the importance of embracing yourself until I found myself in the emergency room one summer in 2012. I had just turned 21. Yep, 21, an exciting time for a college student. You're finally legal, I mean you can buy that alcohol legally and you can drink it legally, and who doesn't like a good chocolate martini? I know I do. See, the problem is, chocolate martinis aside, is that despite the fact that I was 21, growing up with a physical disability known as cerebral palsy left me feeling like an outsider. You see, so being from the inner city of Patterson, being gay, disabled, Latino, poor, and gender non-conforming, I found myself in this intersection of identities, not exactly knowing where I existed, but I knew that embracing myself was going to be difficult. So growing up, I was the freak, the crippled, the outsider. I so desperately wanted to be the cool kid, but none of the cool kids wanted to invite me to the table, so I didn't sit with them. I wasn't cool, I guess, but that's okay. And you're probably thinking, oh, he's gonna talk about hangovers and college partying, but it's beyond just a hangover. This story isn't about the hangover. In fact, that doesn't really matter, despite how painful and droggy I felt after that summer night. This story is about the cleaning ladies who found me in a vacant room covered in my own vomit, thinking I was dead. See, I had blacked out. I don't remember how or when I got into that vacant room. What was even worse was the feeling I felt when I knew that my mother was going to be called because her only son had to be hospitalized. And even worse than that was the look in her eyes when she saw me. That was challenging. And so what I'm learning and what I've learned from that experience is that sometimes we deal with our own shame and our vulnerabilities in a way that can be destructive. I was using alcohol to numb. And one day, I went too far. And ironically, I had to lose myself to find myself, but before I could find myself, it took nine shots of Bacardi, two shots of Pinnacle, an entire bottle of white wine, hence the hangover, hence the blackout, hence the vomit, hence the hospital. See, the following summer after that devastating moment in my life, I mean, I went from being the student leader that everyone loved to that kid who had so much potential because he couldn't learn to embrace himself, he fell off the pedestal that others put on him. So the following summer, I found myself 3,000 miles away from New Jersey, California. Sunny, progressive, warm, laid back, slow paced. Clearly, I was a far away from Jersey. But what the distance gave me was the separation from my friends and family, from everyone that knew about that drunken summer. I was determined to get away. It was also in California 
that I came across Dr. Brene Brown's work on Oprah's Super Soul Sunday. Dr. Brene Brown, who I also enjoy listening to her TED Talks, talks in the gifts of imperfection that only when we are brave enough to explore the darkness will we discover the infinite power of our light. Again, this, this notion of self-awareness and embracing yourself and embracing your light, but recognizing that in order to see the light, you must first go through the darkness. That was my moment, right? And so last fall, I had the great honor of presenting at Harvard for a conference. And at Harvard, I spoke in front of a room similar to this with about 25 people. And I gave a workshop entitled Embracing Yourself, Embracing Your Potential, which then becomes the premise for this talk today. And there, I stood in front of the room and I said, and talked about the issues that impact the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer communities, particularly those of color. And see, what I referred to was the media representation of those communities. And so what happened was, when I talked about the media representation, I found that many times growing up as a child, as a person of color, as a disabled person, I didn't see myself reflected on television. This was before Glee, <laughs> right? And so what I realized, because I didn't see myself reflected back at me, the stories that I was told didn't reflect my lived experience. I didn't know how to embrace myself. But somehow, I was expected to succeed, to be the first person in my family to go to college, to get educated. I was supposed to know how to tap into my potential without knowing how to embrace myself fully. That's problematic. See, what's problematic is that for a long time after that summer night, I lived in deep shame. Deep, profound, every thought, every inaction and action I took was centered around my shame. The self talk in my head wasn't, you're 21, you're a college student, you're gonna make mistakes, people get drunk, it happens. The self talk in my head instead was this, you are a mistake. Despite all the good, despite being a good son and being a good student, that one night, that one mistake, and that one decision to numb my pain led me to being a mistake. See, when we talk about LGBT communities, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about the struggles that this community faces. The Trevor Project, the nation's leading LGBTQ organization for suicide prevention, reports that LGBT youth between the ages of 10 to 24 are more likely to commit suicide. Even further, Black and Hispanic youth are two times more likely to commit suicide than their white youth counterparts. For some of you, that statistic may be jarring. For me, that statistic was me. So after that summer night, suicide seemed like a great option. It seemed like a great way to get rid of the disappointment and the shame and the vulnerability and the loss I felt. But somehow I got through it. I got through it because I realized that it was far more important to embrace myself than to be fearful of what I saw looking back at me in the mirror. Right? And so what I'm talking about here in many times is that while the media is notorious for misrepresenting my lived experience as a gay Latino, that some representation, some visibility is better than none. That's my argument. That I would rather see some superficial glimpse of who I am than nothing at all. Give me your gleeks. Come on, Fox, you can do it, right? But the truth is, we did have some shows, like Queer Ass Folks, right? Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, The L Word, and even for a brief two seasons, we had Noah's Ark, the first show to represent LGBTQ people of color. But you see the difference here in the visual, and I hope you can see this, is that here, it's primarily a bunch of white folks. More white folks. More white folks and women, and the token person of color who's so ambiguous, you're not sure what she is. And then, bam, a whole bunch of color. But even then, in this representation before you, I struggled to see myself. Because I wasn't that like Puerto Rican with the muscles and the tight form fitted and the slick back hair. No, I'm that Puerto Rican that loves me a nice nude hill and some makeup and I like to be fabulous and I still identify as a man and I still use the men's restroom because I'm proud of who I am. But you see, that was a representation of my ability to embrace myself and to be comfortable in my own skin 
and that took time. Because embracing yourself isn't just something we wake up. No, Beyonce, we're not all flawless. We are perfectly flawed because we are human. And so what I'm going to encourage you all today is to remember that embracing yourself, embracing who you are, is an everyday practice, is a daily practice. And so I'm going to talk to you today about how I got to do this TED Talk. Before I do that, I want to talk about Audre Lorde, whose words <coughs> reflected me. She encouraged me to break my silence. James Baldwin, who helped me navigate the frustration I felt against my father. My best friend, Sean Michael Wade, who taught me that there was more to me than meets the eye, who helped to raise my consciousness. My good friend, Darnell Moore, whose resiliency, story in the midst of bullying and violence, he makes me feel braver. Janet Mock, who unapologetically lives her truth and taught me that the importance of embracing myself and defining my own realness was essential. If you haven't already, check out her memoir, Redefining Realness. It's a New York Times bestseller and worth the read. So when we talk about this notion of embracing yourself, what does that mean? It means this. Embracing all of your darkness. Embracing the fact that you are perfectly flawed and beautiful. Embracing the fact that you can walk into a room wearing your heels, wearing your makeup, flicking your hair, and totally being OK with that. And today, I'm here before you all because I posted a Facebook status that said, one day I will do my own TED Talk, and I will call it Embracing Yourself, Embracing Your Potential. And 17 hours later, I was confirmed to speak here today. But why I posted that update is because I believed in myself, embraced myself, and my potential. Thank you. <laughs>